Hello, everyone. We're so happy that you're joining us today. And I'm very excited to introduce our next guest, Cindy Reynolds. Cindy is founder and director of NeuroFit, a neurofitness program to cross-train your brain. At NeuroFit, Cindy utilizes leading-edge technology to identify irregular brain waves and optimize brain function. And Cindy and I have been working together for a really long time. I am, um, you know, I'm a medical doctor, and I see people with post-traumatic stress disorder and attention deficit disorder, or chronic anxiety, chronic depression, uh, insomnia, and then traumatic brain injury. And so I see a lot of people that have these types of conditions and. And it became evident to me long ago that it was helpful to kind of work directly on the brain as well as work with the neurochemistry and, and hormone balance and kind of general health. And then I found Cindy, I don't know, maybe Cindy, like eight, 10 years ago and started getting such better results working with Cindy than with anyone else or just working on my own with the patients. And so... So then when we opened up Jizen, we invited Cindy to come along. And just like I moved Clear Center into Jizen, Cindy moved NeuroFit into Jizen as well. And now we get to collaborate. So I'm just, just with great pleasure, I get to introduce Cindy Reynolds to really introduce what she does to the world so that more people will have the opportunity to get help for their brain. So welcome, Cindy. Welcome. Thanks for having me. This is very exciting. Awesome. Well, tell us a bit about how you got started on this path of building NeuroFit and learning how to train brains. Well, it's a very interesting story. When my daughter Tamron was four years old, she walked in front of a kid on the playground at the height of his swing. And he came down and kicked her in the side of the head and knocked her unconscious for seven hours when she was four years old. Yeah. And, you know, back then they didn't know much about concussions. She wasn't throwing up. So, you know, they said she was fine. She woke up seven hours later and by all intents and purposes, she was okay. She went on to be a rhythmic gymnast on the USA national team, winning medals in Europe and a dancer choreographer in New York her choreography at Madison Square Garden in the U.S. Open and at FIT in New York. Her fashions were in, in the end-of-the-year fashion show, and all of that was before she was 19. But your brain's not fully developed till you're 25. And so 2021, we started noticing something was off with Tam, and we brought her back and had her tested, and she was diagnosed as bipolar. So they put her on all sorts of meds, like huge amounts of meds, and it just made things worse. But luckily, that was right when uh, rehab centers became dual diagnosis, not just for alcohol. So I thought, well, hey, let's have a team of doctors figure out what the right medications are. Well, this changed the course of my life. They called us in, and they said, she's not bipolar. And I went, but I just spent thousands of dollars to buy back. They're like, no, did she ever hit her head? And I'm like, she was knocked unconscious for seven hours. And um, she also uh, fell snowboarding and was in a serious car accident as a passenger where she had a whiplash. So um, the they said, get her to a neurologist. So we did, and they diagnosed her with mild traumatic brain injury, which finally made sense. And they put her on meds, and they worked, but only for a while. And they started wearing off, and she needed a cocktail. And so I started researching, how do you heal a mild traumatic brain injury without meds? And being many, many years in computer science, software development, I traveled all over the country, interviewed the top neuroscientists, and found a program that worked. And I, I was so amazed. I watched what they were doing. Then I started training what they were doing. Then all of a sudden, I decided this is what I need to do. I sold stock, opened 
NeuroFit 10 years ago. And um, I swore that if I could shave any time off of the years that it took us to get our, do our daughter properly diagnosed, then any everything we went through was worth it. So here we are. That's, mm -hmm. that's how we got here. We've been training brains for 10 years now and helping families. That's such an amazing story. That must have just been set so hard as a mother to to see that happen to your child. That's really hard. It's not like she had a broken arm. Everybody accepted her, expected her to perform. You know. Right. Well, you know, as I mentioned, I refer so many different kinds of conditions to you, and you really seem to make a dramatic impact with all of them. Just even most recently, I referred someone with like malignant hypertension unresponsive to medical therapy, which is super high blood pressure that isn't helped by pharmaceuticals. And sure enough, Cindy was able to show that his autonomic nervous system was locked in fight or flight mode. And that was part of the issue. So she's been working to unwind that. So just, just one of so many examples of people I've referred to you over the years. And so what symptoms do you find yourself training most often? What I've discovered over the years that all presenting symptoms and diagnoses have at their source a specific area of brain dysregulation. And using QEEG brain maps, we can identify what that source is and then train that area of the brain. And over the years, there's two common sources that I find over and over again that create variations of diagnoses. And the first is um, axial shearing due to acceleration, deceleration of the brain and the fight or flight mechanism in the autonomic nervous system of what you just alluded to. So um, there, there are other um, areas like um, in insomnia, there's very often at the vertex, there's um, excess fast wave activity, and that's a, a marker for insomnia. And there's also um, for emotional issues, there can be what's called a locked hub or cingulate in the brain. So um, that's very often the source of the symptoms. But the, 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 the interesting thing is so many people come in and they actually have a head injury and don't know it because all it takes is acceleration, deceleration. You don't have to be diagnosed with a concussion because the brain is just sloshing around in cerebral spinal fluid and the skull is very, very sharp. So the brain will bounce off the skull and shear the neurons. And that causes what we call a coup contra coup. And so often the area of impact isn't the area of injury because the brain bounces back. And um, like my niece was in a car accident and her stitches were here and all the bleeding was back there. And so that, ex that acceleration, deceleration causes axonal sharing, which is the tearing of the long connections, the fiber connections in the neurons. And that's often white matter damage. And that disrupts transmission of messages between neurons. So that will, the brain over time will go into a low voltage state and that will cause loss of function presenting with a uh, inability to focus and concentrate for long periods of time, depression, anxiety, because your brain now has to work twice as hard as it doesn't have the fuel power. Okay. And maybe back up a step and just, you mentioned a couple terms that people may not be familiar with. Maybe give us a little bit more background on the actual EEG that you do and what it's picking up and and how you gather the information you're looking for. Yeah, so we we get what's called a QEEG map and we record the electrical activity of the brain and then analyze that data and print out a report. And it will show in the case of um, uh, axonal sharing or a head injury, 
it'll show areas, most injuries, unless you come in for an injury, which is usually more recent, more injuries happened years ago. So the brain has gone into a low powered state and it will, the, the brain, the QEG brain map will show the electrical activity to be very low or two to three standard deviations below the norm. And that is represented in the area of injury as a blue brain, as blue, dark blue or deficient. Now, the other source of often many, many problems is um, that fight or flight mechanism we talked about. And that can be triggered from a traumatic birth. Oftentimes people come in and they've got ADHD and they can't sit still. And I look at the first place I go in the brain map is look at the amygdala and hippocampus and the spite or flight mechanism that gets turned on when there's danger. And that can happen at birth and that can happen in childhood. And um, often, um, if you think about it, um, the amygdala, it goes into fight or flight. But when we're da in danger, we don't have to think, should I turn right or left? We don't have to digest food. Those mechanisms get rerouted. Everything goes into heartbeat, muscle, to flee. When the danger's over for animals, they eventually quickly go back to grazing on the grass, but not us humans. We tend to maintain this fight or flight and a hypervigilant state. And so often it will, you know, present itself in different ways. And um, it's very interesting because, like I said, that's the first area of the brain that I go to. And sometimes I'll see, oh, it's really regulated. And I'll think, whoa, this person had a, a, a good birth and a healthy childhood. And then during a the consult, they'll start talking about how their mother chased them around the house with a butcher knife. And I'm like, whoa, is this the first anomaly to this pattern? And then I started asking, do you meditate? 100% of the time in those cases, meditation turns off what I call the amygdala switch. And it's a really great moment because I can give the client kudos for meditating and I can show them a brain that's same presentation who doesn't meditate, stays back on childhood trauma, and then with theirs that meditate. And that's very powerful for them. Also, one other thing that turns it off, I found over the years, is if they were raised with horses. Equine therapy is a real thing. And you can see this in the brain maps, um, what's called a hypercoherent state. Well, and so let's say you see someone's, you, you do the 19 channel EEG and you see that someone has blue areas of the brain. Uh, what therapies do you do to, to bring those back online? Yeah. So um, there are two specific unique approaches that we use at NeuroFed to bring bring the blue brains online or calm down those hyper red amygdala switches. And so two, two uh, critical pieces that we use that are unique approaches are um, we cross train the brain and we train from the bottom up from the subcortical region to the hubs in the brain and then to the cortex. And the goal there is faster results in fewer sessions. Um, so we cross train because um, over the years I've seen it works because the brain habituates to the same inputs and it gets bored. And so I, as a result, it'll slow down the progress. So I started hitting the brain, the same areas of brain with different technologies. And I could not believe how fast. So for a head injury um, with a blue brain, we'll use different technologies like PEMF, TACS, which is neuromodulation. We'll use red infrared light. We'll use VASPR and LIVO2 and oxygen. Also, um, uh, traditional neurofeedback, uh, heart math, and also um, mind fitness techniques, solar size. So, um, yeah, so that's, that's uh, how, how we target it with different neurotechnologies.
Maybe you could break each one of those down just a little bit more. Okay. So um, a red light, the infrared and red light is um, a red light source. We use a V light and we, we put it on the head and it's a 20 minute session and we use it as a primer a lot of times for uh, Vasper and Livo too. And infrared light and red light has been studies have shown that it works on the mitochondria because in low voltage brains, the mitochondria aren't generating the voltage or the ATP. And, and, and um, that's why the brain goes into low powered state. So activating the mitochondria activates the ATP, generates the um, the neurons to make neural connections, and and um, and allows the voltage to come up and have more power to the brain. And right. folks will um, and oxygen um, will bring resources to the brain and get the brain going so that this process can metabolize faster. And Vasper itself is. Um, has been shown to um, uh, generate BDNF, which is really important for the brain. And um, neuromodulation, we use NeuroFit, so PEMF, like in the um, in the trauma uh, amygdala, we train the gut-brain connection, the vagal. We do what's called a vagal reset, and um, we give the brain um, a frequency that that tells the brain that you're safe. And so we, we repeat that a number of times. And, and um, those are some of the, the training that um, those are a breakdown of the neurotechnologies. Yeah, I think it's, it's really important that you use so many different things where a lot of people are just doing one thing. And I think that's partly why you get such fantastic results and, you know, for more information on all these different modalities, feel free to go to the website, jizen.com. And because and, there's so much to say about each one of those. But uh, can, you, can you also talk about going from the bottom up? So that's the other area where uh, we're unique because, um, you know, the tendency is to want to go train the cortex if... The brain is blue. Let's let's bump it up. But often there's a dysregulated autonomic nervous system underlying everything, and so that's why that's the first place I go look. And I use the analogy of building a house. And so when we're cross training, we cross train from the base foundational layer up. So. Um, just like building a house, you build a stable foundational layer. Then you put the walls on, which is moving into now training the hubs. And then you put the roof on. So and the and and the trim. And that's when we too fine tune the neural networks. But um, if that base foundational layer, and I call it um, a different source layers. If there's multiple source layers, you want to train that base foundational layer first, because if you go straight to the cortex, the amygdala is still stuck on and it's going to fight you or might run up resistance and it might take a little longer. Tell us more about the amygdala and limbic system and just why those areas get stuck on when someone has childhood trauma. Well, because it's the the brain's natural way way to when there's danger. It's the not only the subcortical area of the brain, but it's also the more um, the older part of the brain. And so, um, before we had our cortex and all our uh, prefrontal cortex, and that was the that subprimal survival part of the brain, and it's subcortical regions. And luckily, the technology now, as we use um, NeuroGuide uh, to generate our QEG brain maps, and um, the luckily the um, the technology has evolved where you can go in and you can read the the um, the the subcortical regions, and also Brain Avatar allows us to do that really well as well. Mm -hmm. So interesting. Um, so can you describe for us the biomedical indicators you see and how you feel now being in a biomedical setting 
but we're collaborating just down the hall. It's just so fantastic. Um, and in the case of, you know, mild traumatic brain injuries and trauma, when you look at the areas of dysregulation in the brain maps, they're very localized. They're single points of injury or trauma. And then in other cases, all of a sudden, you know, they it starts being more diffuse, meaning it's um, that low voltage or blue is all over the rear hemisphere or that red inflammation like presentation is diffuse over the rear hemisphere or diffused over a right the right hemisphere in a larger area. And so when that when I see that, that's when it triggers a biomedical as a as a source. So like for instance, some molds, if they're uh, if they're secreting if there's myotoxins involved, then that will uh, affect and interfere with the brain cells metabolism. And that will show as a blue brain. So here is an example of that. This is a head injury right here. This first, you can see it's very focused, very focal injury. And this is one, this is your, one of your and our common client. And then I trained the head injury and you can see that it's less blue. It's getting, it's starting to heal and come back on white. Then I expected the next brain map because we continued training to get even better. And then all of a sudden there was all this blue. So I sent this client up the highway to, to you to get mold testing. And sure enough, she tested positive from mold. So you put her on the protocol. I continue training her head injury. Look at her brain. It's completely regulated. So that's an amazing example of how we work together and what how, the presentation. The other presentation, and this just happened, is um, excess fast wave activity all over diffused over the entire rear hemisphere. So I now, this happened while I'm at Jizen. So I was able to, um, have her tested for inflammation. And sure enough, she came back with Epstein-Barr. So being in this biomedical setting is so amazing because a lot of times the neurotransmitters will show up as glutamate uh, because the autoimmune system has kicked in. And when I see that, I can walk over, order a blood test, and I, I kind of joke on this, like I said, I used to have to come down the highway. Now I go across the hallway and the we can help way more people a lot faster now. And that's just such a bet. And I find the results right away. So that's amazing. I often say it's like it would be really hard for me to help someone if I couldn't do blood tests to find out what's going on. And and I think it's equally hard to help someone's brain if you're yeah. not looking at the brainwave patterns. And and so I, I just really hope one of the results of this of this conversation here is that more and more people will understand that you can see what's going on in a person's life by looking at the brainwave patterns in their brain. And you've been almost like a soothsayer, like you've been able to kind of shock people sometimes when you look at their brains and say, did you, did you hit your head when you were eight or, you know, in childhood, did you experience this? And, and they're always like, how did you know that? <laughs> oh, that's so funny, especially teenage boys, you know, they don't want to be here in the first place, but during the consult, I'll start telling them everything they're experiencing it about, you're scaring me. <laughs> and know that. That's so true. And then sign up right away. It's pretty cool. Yeah. Well, maybe tell us about some of your success stories. Well, give me some examples of, I know I hear, I hear them all the time on my end with the patients that we share, but I know you receive letters from teachers and grateful, you know, gratitude from parents and things like that as well. So give us some success stories. Well, 
it's just so rewarding because, like I said, I I got into this to help other families, and it's been a life changer for many, many families. And I can't tell you how many families and parents, clients come in and go, why don't more people know about this? And so I'm so grateful that we're doing this and more and more people do know about it and are going to know about it more because this stuff works. And a few of the testimonials um, this is the first one is a teenage boy, and his mother came in because he just couldn't function in school. The teachers were just at their wits' end. He was in a special school. And um, so then he came to train, and it turns out he, uh, I asked the mom, well, how was the his birth? And she goes, oh, he was traumatic birth, and he was hooked up to all these machines. And so here is the trauma markers here, and this is his pre-map, and this is his post-map. It's post-training, and it's completely regulated. This red amygdala and hippocampus is locked in fight or flight. That's, this is one of the signposts of it, and um, completely locked up. And here's the testimonial from, from his mom. My son is a very bright 13-year-old, but has struggled academically. He was diagnosed with ADHD and anxiety. We tried lots of different medications, but they only made him more anxious. Luckily, Cindy and Neurofit Jison was recommended. After only a few sessions, my son noticed himself that he felt more relaxed. He could even breathe better, and his heart isn't racing all the time. His teachers at school are amazed and see a big difference in his focus and motivation to learn. He comes home from school excited, retelling what he has learned, and he never did that before. Thank you. Ah, oh, just warms your heart, right? And then to see the kid themselves when they come, at first there's like this, and then they come in and they're like, hey, which room am I going to? You know? <laughs> Um, then I have an adult male who had what I call the two sources of injury. He had um, a traumatic childhood. So you can see he has that same marker. And this is the pre-map. And this is his post. And it's completely regulated. And he also had a head injury. And this is his progress over time. You can see the focalized dark blue low voltage. And he got, he's an adult male now. This happened when he was a teenager. So that's why lower voltage over time. And you can see the progression. So this is his brain now, completely regulated. And his testimonial is when I came to NeuroFit, I had brain fog, a nervous system on the fritz, and difficulty functioning in my daily life. I was used to being a high-performing, capable executive, and I didn't know what was wrong or how to get back on track. Thankfully, my brain map identified exactly what I was experiencing and provided the answers I had longed for. And thanks to my NeuroFit training, I am now functioning better than ever and have returned to a normal life once again. Amazing. And what's so cool to me is that in order to achieve these beautiful results, you're using electromagnetism and light and and these things that are just so natural and non-invasive, but when applied appropriately, it it absolutely changes the brain and and restores functionality. It's so rewarding. So rewarding. And I have an adult female, and she says, the brain fitness program at NeuroFit uses amazing technology that has healed decades of trauma that in impacted my executive functioning and my ability to relax and enjoy life. I can now focus on important tax tasks when I need to, and I can trust and surrender to the moment. The mind fitness training at NeuroFit also offers amazing support because it gave me the necessary tools to transform my thoughts and feelings. It's a revolutionary process 
that alters long-term patterns in the brain and can be used anywhere. Neurofit has improved both my physical, mental, and emotional health. Thank you, Neurofit. It's truly amazing. And just from my angle, um, you know, some of the cases coming to mind right now, uh, I've had people with autoimmune diseases that we found they they also had some head trauma. So I referred them to Cindy and she found their autonomic nervous system was locked into fight or flight. And just relieving that not only had an impact on their immune system and their disease and unwinding the autoimmune disease, but also just changed how he went through life and just his interactions with the people around him because he was much calmer and more mindful in his interactions. And you know, I've had people with chronic fatigue syndrome that had kind of like neuroinflammatory disorders that were just sensitive to light and sound and stimuli and people and situations that then have worked with Cindy and then been able to uh, not only think more clearly, but just feel less sensitive and calmer in their bodies. And and there'll be people that she, she will refer back to me and say, have you thought about testing this person for Lyme disease? Or maybe this person's been exposed to mold. Could you look into that for me? And so it's just been this beautiful interaction. And and like I said, the treatments are so non-invasive. And, you know, whether it's it's helping to oxygenate the brain better or just, you know, kind of using electromagnetism in the form of pulsed electromagnetic field therapy to kind of calm or or stimulate certain areas, it, it's just so non-invasive and and it's much certainly much better than pharmaceuticals and more targeted and to the point of what's going on. Sure. So, Cindy, uh, given everything you've shared here, like, is there any other thoughts of th things you'd like to share with people? Well. Um... So uh, what, you know, what you can expect, the great thing about this is it's like um, it's it's exercising for your brain, like going to the gym. So once we have the brain map and we record the data, then and we've analyzed it, we'll go over the results with you. And if you decide to um, to come in for training, um, then we will set you up with a training program. And um, during the consults, I'll explain, when you come in for the consult, I'll explain what it's like um, and what to expect. And it's, um, we usually do in training in sets of 10 sessions, and we do two more brain maps in that 10 sessions to track your progress. And I don't like to know ahead of time why they're coming in for a brain map because I want to just see what the brain waves are telling me. And then during the consult, we'll deep dive into what their subjective experience is and, and compare it to what the objective data I have described and how that data would be presenting in daily life. And like I said, that teenage boy was like, how did you know about? And <laughs> parents are like, yeah, that's it. How do I sign up? How, you know? So yeah, so we'll um, we'll train um, in sets of 10. 20 sessions is standard. Some people only need 15 and some people could need 30 or more if there are what I call the more sources of dysregulation. Um, so uh, once you sign up, we establish a custom protocol. And during the session, you'll relax, listen to music, um, it's, it's, uh, basically your brain is getting a really big workout, even though you're, you're just sitting there. And so I liken it to, um, to going to the gym. It takes repetition and consistency. So we'll do the same protocol for a number of sessions. So that, uh, so that the brain can change through that repetition. And um, I often tell clients that you, even though you're just sitting there, you might feel tired at night because your brain really is getting a big workout. And so, um, so people often say, "Thanks for." I'm glad you told me because it's true. I was really tired. And um, the other thing is, I don't normally talk about changes um, until after five or ten sessions, so that repetition can can sink in. 
And um, the changes are also very subtle. So sometimes your loved ones will notice the change before you do because um, you're so habituated to be in that whatever state it was. But um, yeah, so clients will, um, when, when we start after like five or 10 sessions, I'll start saying, okay, now, and this is a daily life, let's start noticing and I'll train them how to notice. And people will, um, with if they've been in flight or flight, very common to say, oh, there's just a base foundational layer of calm that wasn't there before. Or if one of their hubs was stuck on, so many people say the same thing. I feel like I can pause now before I react, you know, um, and I can control my reactions more than, re than the reactions control me. So that's, that's pretty interesting. That's really what clients can expect by coming to NeuralFed and signing up for training. And do these results stay or do clients need to come back again after a period of time for a refresh or how, do, how does it work? That's a good question. Um, when the training program is complete, basically the clients don't need to come back for follow-up sessions. And that is obviously unless there's another trauma event that happened or another head impact. Because once those neural pathways have established themselves and the underactive, overactive regions of the brain have regulated, those results will maintain themselves. And, and that's within reason, of course. There's the aging process and every brain is different. So, But it's interesting because I know when a client is done, because so often they'll start sharing on um, what they're experiencing and they'll be symptoms of all of daily life that we all experience like stress or sadness. And so, um, so then I know that they're healed because they're not talking about brain injury or head trauma or something or like fight or flight. But um, that's where the mind fitness starts merging with the brain fitness program because I will give people, uh, clients, tools now to manage daily life. And um, I've written two books um, that are on Amazon right now. Solar, Soul Seeker is my memoir, but I've ri also written Soul's Bridges, which is I've been using in the Mind Fitness program at NeuralFit now for over seven years. And that's where um, uh, the client's with soul bridges, they get seven tools to uh, solar size or exercise of their soul to master thoughts and emotions and accelerate personal evolution. So basically, it gives you tools once your brain is trained here now to take out into daily life with you. And so not only does it help them NeuroFit help clients to regulate their brains to function better. They also have tools to master and accomplish their soul plan. So no clients don't necessarily come back, but um, once they train, but who does come back is very often uh, I'll help one member of a family and then the dad will come in or the sister or the brother. And it's very common to now start having entire families come in at NeuroFed. And, and I start helping one family in one school district and they tell another family in another district. So the word spreads. And so Beth, between the two of us, we are helping families all over the Bay Area. And I like to say NeuroFed is helping families one brain at a time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and not only the Bay Area, the whole world. You know, people come to Jaisen from all over the world. So it's really an honor to be able to work side by side with you because I just am so impressed with what you're able to accomplish. And together, we're so much better than apart. So, so anyway, I hope that everyone can understand now how helpful it is to look at the brain and the wave, brain wave patterns and, and start to work on modulating those. So Cindy, given what you've shared today, any take home messages for our audience about health and healing? That the brain is really the center of everything. 
And if you're having any symptoms in daily life, just getting a picture of the brain is worth a thousand words. That saying is never more true than it is to just get the picture. And then you have answers and you can see it's not something nebulous anymore or something that you think you're doing wrong. It's actually a physical manifestation in the source of your brain. That's right. All right. Well, thank you so much. This has been such a pleasure. Thank you. Awesome.